Hey everyone, it's the Bland Boys back at it again. And today we're gonna to go over a really cool new feature that Bland AI just came up with, which is called the Pathway Marketplace. So imagine the App Store, but now it's gonna be the Conversational Pathway Store. So if you've ever created a pathway before, if you've never, because you've been intimidated, this will be your moment to be able to just go right in, grab one off the shelf and be able to use it right away. So we're super excited to talk to you about this new feature. I remember, I mean, I've been waiting for this for a long time, like even a couple of months ago. For example, let's say you have a bunch of different sub accounts. Well, it was really difficult to duplicate the same work without literally having half of your screen on the old pathway and the other half on the new one. So this just saves off a bunch of our time. Exactly. So we're going to go right into it today. We're going to share our screen to give you a little bit of a preview of the Pathway Marketplace, which you can actually access yourself now. It is technically live and obviously it's going to be growing over the next couple of weeks to months. And this is the conversational pathways marketplace. Now, I know it might look kind of bare bones at the moment. Keep in mind, this literally just came out, but good news is that the use case we're gonna be showing you, the actual pathway that we use, we're gonna be putting it in here so that at the end of this video, you can literally just click on the link that'll be in the description. And it'll take you right to it. You can copy and paste it and use it literally today. What we're gonna be building today is a voice version of a video that I made previously about how to get more data out of what your customers are telling you. Because if you're a local service or if you're selling services to local service businesses, something that's hugely popular or super important is reviews. And the only reviews that genuinely matter in the local service space, in most cases, is Google reviews. So anything Absolutely. you can do to get more reviews or even more importantly, to get less negative reviews is hugely, hugely valuable. Because think about it, whenever you're buying something locally, you're not going, I mean, most people aren't going to Yelp or Facebook. They're going to Google. They're going to go search up X near me. So how can we use voice agents to help get more reviews and to help get less negative reviews or to at least improve our business based on our customer's feedback? And the best yep. part about it, we don't have to wait until they tell us their feedback. You can proactively get more reviews. And like a really good example of what I'm saying is if somebody had a negative experience, but with this, you can actually reach out to them before they have the time to leave a negative review or a nasty review on Google. Yeah, and what's super important is that what we're gonna show you right now is our first contribution to the marketplace or the pathways showcase. So what we're gonna go through step-by-step step is something you'll have access to if you just log on and use this feature. So this is the actual pathways that we're gonna be using. I'll dive into it in just a second. For context, the CRM that we're using as the backend is go high level. And I think the best way to actually start this off is to show you what this does. So as you can see here, I've got a bunch of leads here. And although they would usually typically go through the entire like sales cycle, just as an example, I've got myself right here. And we created an automation within the CRM. And you can do this with most CRMs. Within under a specific condition, we're sending a webhook into Bland or sending a piece of data into Bland. And then if I just scroll down here where it says stage, and then I pressed on send or sent for review, if I update that, look at my phone and you can see that this has now moved to send to review you'll see that i'm getting a call is this a good time to talk i'm following up on your recent experience with us sure can you tell me a little bit about your overall experience with our service oh i love it thank you so much for your positive feedback i'm really glad to hear that you had a good experience with us would it be okay if i sent a link to leave a review to the phone number we have on file of course I'll go ahead and send that review link to your phone number. You should receive it shortly. I'll go ahead and send that over. Before I let you go, do you have any questions while I'm here? No, I don't. Thanks so much. You're welcome. I've just sent the link and you should receive it within the next few seconds. Thank you again for your time and I wish you a great day. You too. Bye. Now, if you'll see here, and I don't know if you can see this super well, but if I click on this link, it'll actually take me Oh yeah. <laughs> cool review page to leave a review. Yeah. So like in terms of funnels, you always think of a sales funnel or an upsell funnel. What we're kind of alluding to is a Google review funnel where assuming that someone's had a good experience, you give them a call and you try to capitalize on that by getting that review to make sure that they can actually express that experience. hundred percent. Now I gave them the easy option, which was, I love the service, but yeah. sometimes you'll reach out to people. And maybe something happened. They had a bad sales rep, something along those lines. What do we do then? 
Now you'll see, I just set my lead back into its normal stage and then I'll put it again at send for review. I'll update it. Let's see what happens now. I don't know if I pick it up. Assistant calling from ABC company. Is this a good time to talk? I'm yeah. following up on your recent experience with us. It is a good time. I'd like to take a moment to discuss your overall experience with our service. How would you rate the service you received from us? Terrible. It sucked. <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear that. Can you please tell me more about what went wrong? What specifically didn't meet your expectations? Yeah, your communication sucks. I didn't get any email, didn't get any text message about how the product was going. It was terrible. I apologize for the lack of communication. It's unacceptable that you didn't receive any updates on your product. Can you tell me more about what you were expecting in terms of communication and how we can improve our process to better serve you in the future? Yeah, well, at least daily or weekly updates about what's going on with my project would be the least that I can ask for, right? Daily or weekly updates would be a reasonable expectation. I'll make sure to pass on your feedback to our team so we can improve our communication process. We appreciate your input and we'll do our best to implement these changes moving forward. Thank you. Bye. So that was me being really, really mean. Now, yeah, it came naturally to you. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I go and I'll give it a few seconds just to process, but those are the two sort of main decisions. That's what I mean by being proactive. If somebody had a negative experience with a company and let's say I didn't reach out, even the simple fact of reaching out, asking about the experience that in itself calms a lot of people's nerves. Sometimes people right. just want to feel heard. But if I give it a second, you'll actually see if I zoom in, this is the call that just happened. Nice. And you have the full summary there? Yeah. So this is the summary of the call. Let me make this even bigger. Customer expressed extreme dissatisfaction with the recent experience, signing a complete lack of communication from the company. So that was what happened during the call. Now you can have, there's also a scoring thing, which tells you basically what did the AI think of the overall call? And then probably the best part is a suggestion. So we understand what the problem is. What does the AI think we should do to actually improve it? In this case, it's pretty straightforward. It's implement a daily or weekly update on project progress to enhance customer communication and satisfaction. Super simple, Perfect. super straightforward, but super applicable. Awesome. And the way it distilled the feedback too with terrible service due to lack of communication, that's super informative because now as a business, imagine you have a hundred of these, you can start to do like analytics on it where you can say, you know what? 70% of our issues are communication related. 100%. Now let's see how we actually build this. So the first part, the one I'm going to sort of skim over because it's the most straightforward one is the actual automation from Go High Level, right? All we have to do for that is if I go to the automation section and this applies to any CRM. Most of them will have some sort of automation backend. We have an AR caller for more reviews and all we're doing is the trigger is the pipeline stage changed and then we're just sending a webhook over to Bland. This has the API key and everything with literally that phone number and the name if needed. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Then the second piece of this is bland, which is actually what's receiving the call and actually making said call. This is the pathways that we are dealing with. And if I start from the top, basically there's two options. Either the user calls and, or sorry, either we call the customer and say, look, is this a good time or is this not a good time? If they say it's not a good time, it'll try to reschedule them. Now this doesn't actually go anywhere, but it's just to give them an out and say, be like, hey, look, can you call me back afterwards? Then most times if somebody actually picks up, picks up they will have at least a minute to talk to you. First thing that we do is ask him, look, how's the experience? And here's where the main sort of branch um, splits off. If the robot detects that, hey, look, this was an overall positive experience. All we're doing is we're first of all, we're thanking them. And then we're asking them, hey, look, do you mind if I send you a link? If the user says yes, then we're using a, an actual webhook node within Bland that will send a webhook over into make with the phone number that we are calling then. As soon as that webhook is sent, we're asking, hey, look, did you have any questions? Anything I can help with while I'm here? If the user has no question, it ends a call. And then if the user hasn't received a link, this is where it's really up to you how you want to deal with this. For example, if the user said, hey, look, I haven't received a link or it's going to the wrong place, etc." Most times you can either do a live transfer or, a, you know, some sort of rescheduling system, but just some sort of out in case that the phone number is not the correct one or the user simply just hasn't received the link. Then that's the positive side of things fairly straightforward on the negative side of things let's say this person was angry like, like we like we said communication sucked well here's really important to go deep in the empathy side of things so first thing we're doing express regret for the neg negative experience as the customer to provide some more details on what went wrong 
emphasize that their feedback is important. We're trying to get as much data as we can from this customer because every negative experience of a customer is an opportunity for you to actually legitimately improve your business. Emphasize your feedback is important. Do not take any liability. And this is super important. And um, we learned this from experience. Be very careful with the word, it's our fault or it's all on us. Because a lot of times customers are confused and they might, it's just safer to, although you express regret and you will try to make things right, it's just safer from a liability standpoint to never have the agent say, look, this is our fault. Right, exactly. So for liability and also the most important thing is that you're giving them that avenue to just vent. A lot of times people like best practice is you write a very angry letter to someone and never send it. This is kind of like the virtual voice version of that angry letter. Then we're recording it. We're trying to get a, a bit more feedback. See, is there anything else we can be? And also tell them, hey, look, we're taking this very seriously. We will be sending it over to the team so that they can review, which we will be doing in just a sec. And then after that, we're simply ending the call. From the bland perspective, it's also fairly straightforward. We've tried to keep it as simple and as concise as we can. And that's the entire pathways with Blend. Now, like we said earlier, this whole thing will be available on the pathways marketplace. Yeah. And one thing to think about is for the positive experience, we just rooted them straight to the Google review. Theoretically, you could do more than that. You could say, Hey, here's also a text we're going to send you for 20% off of your next X. So it's also upsell opportunities. It's ways to ascend them maybe to another service. If you're like a beauty or service-based business, the opportunity is really endless there. So like having that extra step in your business, it's proactive. It gets you more data and the more ways you can measure, the more ways you can win. And the last thing is it gives you a lot of opportunities to have additional touch points with your end customer. And that's a really good point. Sort of sidebar off of that is I know a lot of coaching businesses where accountability is a huge thing, right? But you only mm -hmm. have so many hours in a day. Well, yep. I'm sure there's an opportunity here to have these AI callers call people who need to be held accountable. And then you'll, if they're on track and if they're answering the phone calls and they're giving basically like reports every single day, well, you don't necessarily have to get involved until somebody falls off the track. Correct. They're giving you your own time back. Plus, from a customer's perspective, they're actually being fo followed up on really as often as you want. Now, what happens after the call ends? First thing that we're doing is we're actually sending a webhook off to make. Let me show you what that looks like. We're now in Make. Now, if you've never used Make, it's basically it's very similar to Zapier in which it just allows you to connect a bunch of different softwares together super easily without having to use any code. In this case, we're using it as a connection point between Bland, which is the calling agent, and ChatGPT, which is sort of what you can call almost the brain, right? And yeah. in this case, what ChatGPT is doing is it's actually reading the entire transcript. And then we're just telling, hey, look, please analyze the call transcript above and provide the following sentiment first of all determine was it positive or negative this is going this is going to come into play later then give it a score it can be out of 10 whatever you'd like then the most important part is what was the feedback and what were the suggestions based off of the entire conversation and it's super important here always output it within a json block which allows us to take these four elements and actually separate them so that we can input them individually within our google sheet so if it wasn't in json it wouldn't work if it was just straight output it wouldn't work as easily because okay. basically ChatGPT is going to give you one um, like output and by, but by telling it to output it this way, it now allows us to take that one output and separate into four or multiple different outputs. Right. And then uh, just a little uh, parsing module to take those that one input and to parse it or separate it. And now here, there's, there's a little filter here that is based off of the sentiment that we took from ChatGPT. If the sentiment contains the word negative or that the overall call was negative, that information we don't necessarily need to put into this Google Sheet. This is purely only for feedback and suggestions. So right. if the basically we only want stuff to go into a Google Sheet, that's negative. Then after that, super simple. We're just connecting into Google Sheets. We're putting the phone number, the summary of the call, the suggestions, the feedback, and the score. It's like that. Yeah, so you, yeah. you can see here it's a pretty straightforward flow. If you've ever seen a make or Zapier automation, sometimes you look like a billion nodes but you can make something very powerful by just doing something as simple as this. And the amount of businesses that I see that just skimp over, because the thing is, is if you get a negative review, even if, like the, the amount of work, you can never, you can never really get rid of them. The only way to kind of like hide them is just to get a bunch of positive negative reviews. <laughs> right. You know, the best way to stop getting negative reviews is to preempt them, be proactive. Because literally the, Mark, you mentioned it earlier, most people just want to feel heard. They just want somebody to talk to, but they don't, they don't find any outlet. 
So the only outlet they end up going to is the one that they know everybody will see because they think the company doesn't care about them. Yeah. So one really important thing on this, and we're kind of like veering off the core, like bland AI talk, but just generally as a business strategy, a lot of people, when they leave a restaurant, just as a good example, and the service was terrible and the food was cold and, 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 and they immediately feel like an hour after, man, that I, I just wasted my evening. I had a whole week of work and I wasted my evening in retaliation. I want to get back at them for this feeling. I, I feel of like anger. So I'm going to write a really bad review. And even if, if it was like a two star experience, I'm going to give it a one because I'm just, I'm so not cared about. So this can not necessarily guarantee you don't get negative reviews, but maybe it's less of a negative review. Maybe they'll be like, okay, cool. At least they care to have this service they created, even if I didn't have the best experience. And a super simple example, if somebody really had a negative review, because this is sent as soon as the product is done. And if you see somebody on the phone and within the actual sheet and they're super pissed, well, you can literally just pick up the phone and call them and be like, hey, what do we do? How can we make it better? Right, exactly. So the make it better part. So imagine four or five months from now where this is not like 6.5 out of 10 human-like, it's eight out of 10. Mm-hmm. And you get a call right after and you just let the AI have it. I had a horrible experience, yada, yada, yada. They can say, hey, like, come back a week from now. Give us another chance. We'll give you an XYZ person a free meal. Give us another shot. You can now try and actually compensate and fix it and kind of build a relationship. Whereas it was a guaranteed failure the way things are right now. I love that idea. Now, just to keep the, to give the people what we promised we'd give them. We've done make. We've done bland, we've done go high level. There is no reason why you would not be able to implement this within your business. Literally, if you started doing this today, I'm sure you could have this figured out by the end of the week. The entire pathways, like we just showed you, is gonna be available on the Pathways Marketplace. The make automations is also gonna be available in the link in the description. Is there a reason, Mark, why people wouldn't implement this? We have no reason. And we'll actually throw in the little make automation. We'll just take out all the credentials. We'll throw in the make automation in the description to So you have no excuses to stop the flow of negative reviews in your business. That's all we got for you guys today. If you enjoyed this, please, as usual, give a like and subscribe to the channel. And we'll keep pumping out this content as things come out, which is pretty much seems to be every week. And by the way, if you have ideas or comments about ways that we can actually make this better, we love making version two and threes. So any ideas, drop in the comments. And we could even do like some sort of series where we do like one a week, etc. But let the ideas run loose in the comments. We read all of them. Awesome. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.